Hello and welcome. You've reached Zero Limits Living. I'm Dr. Joe Vitale. Every week I bring you inspiration and information to help you live a better life. Happier, healthier, wealthier in all aspects, including spirituality. This show has become so popular, you can now see it or watch it on 1,000 different platforms, including Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, YouTube, and more. I'm putting all the episodes in one place to make it convenient for you. You can go to ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com, ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com, and watch them all. I also want to remind you that I have a special offer going on. I endorse coaching, and I started my own coaching program almost 20 years ago. It's been proven, it's been tested, it's been trademarked, and it works. Find out what it's all about by going to MiraclesCoaching.com, MiraclesCoaching.com. And now I have a treat for you. Usually I have a guest, and I always look forward to interviewing my guest because I learn as you learn. But this week at the last minute, something came up from my guest, and so it's me. And what I intend to do is to give you a gift. I'm going to give you a free training in how to attract money now how to attract money. I figure this is a hot button for virtually everybody. It's probably of concern for you. Whether you have money or you would like to have more money, what I'm going to reveal are the seven steps to attract more money. This is based on a book I wrote back in 2010 called Attract Money Now. Attract money now. And I'll tell you how you can have it for free along the way in this free training course. I want to begin by proving that this works. First of all, if you've been watching these episodes, you know my story at least a little bit. I was homeless at one point, I was in poverty for 10 years. I went on to great success and pretty much living the lifestyle of the rich and famous. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that to prove that what I've discovered, what I've learned, what I teach, what I've tested will work for you too. But just in case you think, well, I was lucky and maybe this worked for Joe Vitale, but it may not work for you. There are plenty of other people it has been working for. I'll give you a quick story. Many years ago when I went to Thailand, I met a young man. He was 35 years old at the time. And he told me the most amazing, inspiring story. He said when he was 20 years old, 15 years before that moment, he was homeless in Thailand. And he was broke. He was starving. He was living on the beaches. And he was angry. He called a friend of his and asked for money. And the friend said, I'm not going to send you money, but I'll send you a book. And he sent him a copy of the book, The Secret which was based on the movie, The Secret, and hopefully you've seen it. If not, go watch it. You can see it at thesecret.com or thesecret.tv. It's on Amazon. It's on Netflix. It's in hotel rooms. It's everywhere at this point. So watch The Secret. So this homeless man, 20 years old, gets a copy of the book, The Secret, and he reads it, and he gets even more enraged. He thinks this stuff is nonsense. None of this stuff works. And he said, I'm going to prove that this material does not work. So he read about setting intentions and visualizations and expecting miracles. And he said, well, I'll try to see if I can get a cup of coffee but he was skeptical. He didn't believe this was going to work. Somebody bought him a cup of coffee. And he thought, well, maybe that's a fluke. That's a coincidence. He said, let me try lunch. Well, somebody buys him lunch. Now he starts to think maybe there's something to these principles that Dr. Joe Vitale and others are teaching. And he says, let me see if I can get a part-time job. He attracts a part-time job. He keeps expanding his belief. He keeps expanding what his intentions are. He keeps going for more, and he keeps attracting more. So fast forward, the moment that I'm meeting him in Bangkok, Thailand, he is 35 years old, and he is a billionaire. Not a millionaire or multimillionaire, a billionaire. He had, at that point, 20 different businesses, 
He had a couple hundred employees. He had the largest real estate company in Southern Thailand. And he was putting on his very first seminar, a self-help seminar. And he had me as one of the speakers, mainly because he wanted to say thank you. He told me that he owed his transformation to learning the secrets of the law of attraction and applying them and reaping the rewards. And he owed it all to me, Jack Canfield, Bob Proctor, and many of the other teachers and authors that were in the movie The Secret. And he was there telling me his story firsthand. I ended up helping him write a book about his story called Homeless to Billionaire. Put it on your reading list, Homeless to Billionaire by Andres Pira, P-I-R-A, and myself. Now, I'm telling you his story. I'm telling you my story because I want to set the stage. What I'm revealing to you are the seven principles for attracting more money. You can probably use these principles to attract anything. But the focus of this particular show is to give you the tools, the steps, the proven formula for attracting specifically money. So are you ready? Get out a piece of paper, pen, start taking notes. We are recording this whole thing. It will be on all of those different platforms I mentioned earlier. So you can watch this, you can share this, you can review this, and you can keep absorbing it until you get this. So what are the seven steps that are in the book, Attract Money Now? The very first one, you have to alter your thinking. Now, this is big because most of us have a very bad attitude towards money. We think money's bad. We think money corrupts. We think money is evil. I've been on stages all over the world, including Russia and Ukraine and Peru and Iran and Bermuda and Canada and probably any country you could name. And what I discovered is every one of these cultures, every one of these countries has a limiting belief in their subconscious mind around money. And it's this this very belief that is preventing people from attracting more money. I've often said that money matches mindset. If you don't feel good about money, you're not going to have money or keep money or attract more money. You'll keep it away because of your own mental perceptions, your filters. So when I've been on all these countries or on stages in all these countries, and I spotted this belief in everybody, I realized it's the number one belief to alter your thinking about money. Now, what is that belief? You have it. I've had it. I can begin a sentence and you will you will finish it. Money is the root of all. You just said evil, didn't you? Money is the root of all evil. Virtually everybody would agree to that. They've all heard it. They've all believed it. They've all unconsciously acted from it. The thing is, it's not true. George Bernard Shaw had said, the lack of money is the root of all evil. Money is not the root of all evil. But let's look at this. I want to help you. So in this very first step, let's clear up this belief. Because by clearing up this belief, you will begin to allow money into your life. You still should do all seven steps in this formula. But this first one alone will free you. It will free you to allow money to come into your life because you can easily imagine that if you want money to pay your bills, to take care of your family, to contribute to causes you believe in, but you're not getting it because you think it's evil, won't your life be better once you remove this limiting belief? So money is the root of all evil is from a biblical phrase. It's a fragment of the phrase. The longer phrase is, the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, first of all, it's from biblical literature, and it's from centuries ago. We don't know what was actually said or actually written. We've had that downloaded to us, paraphrased, reinterpreted, given to us, and we don't really know where it came from or why. But let's look at it. Let's accept it on its face value. The love of money is the root of all evil. Well, guess what? The really wealthy, well-adjusted people that I know, including myself, do not love money. 
We don't love money. We appreciate money. We leverage money. We use money. We direct money. We give money. We invest money. But we're not in love with money. This is a very important concept to get. Now, Arnold Patton has been one of the authors to influence me. And he once said something that will transform your relationship to money right now. He said, the sole purpose of money is to express appreciation. Think about it. The sole purpose of money is to express appreciation. When I first heard that from Arnold Patton, I thought, well, surely there's an exception here. But then I started to think when I pay the grocery bill, aren't I glad to have food to eat? When I pay the phone bill, aren't I grateful to have a phone? When I pay a car payment or a house payment or any payment, aren't I grateful for what I'm paying for? This one insight alone will break open your ability to receive money. Because now you'll see that money is at least neutral, if not actually good. So you don't need to be in love with money. You should appreciate money. You should feel gratitude for money so that you can welcome it into your life. You can use it for good causes. I've often said, and I wrote another book called The Awakened Millionaire, that if you have causes in the world that you care about, one of the best things you can do is make peace with money, allow money into your life, and then direct it to those causes you believe in. This is huge. This frees you to have money, large sums of money, because you've made peace with money. So in this very first step in the seven-step formula, what you want to do is realize money's neutral. Money's not bad. Money's not evil. Money doesn't corrupt. Money is as much of a tool as this pen that I'm now holding in my hand. With this pen, I can probably write a love letter. I could probably write a check. I can also turn it and stab you with it. But is it the pen or is it me? Obviously, it's me. The pen's innocent. Money is innocent. You can use it in any way you like. And because you're watching the show or listening to Zero Limits Living right now, you're probably coming from a very noble place. You just want to do good in your life, in your family, in your community, and hopefully in the world. So you can use money for good. So when it comes to this first step, First, you have to understand that you have had beliefs about money. We just expanded those beliefs. The second thing you have to understand is you have beliefs about yourself. Most people don't think they're worthy. Most people don't think they're deserving. Most people don't think that they are deserving of good things, including money or virtually anything else. And so the next belief that needs to be taken care of is the belief about your own self-worth. I mentioned I had been homeless, and I mentioned Andres Pira had been homeless. We had to rebuild our self-image. We had to rebuild our self-worth. And I don't know who you are or where you are, but maybe you have to do that too. Well, the good news is you can. We all can. One of the people I interviewed fairly recently for this very show was Dr. Benjamin Hardy, who wrote a book, Personality Isn't Permanent. Personality Isn't Permanent, which implies that you can change the way you see yourself. You can change your persona. You can change your personality. And if you feel like you're not deserving, you have to look and rebuild your own image of yourself to know you're a child of the universe. You have been given the greatest gift of all, life. You deserve the pleasures and the comfort of life. You deserve to live your life mission. And maybe, and this is what I had to do, you have to start looking in the mirror. And when you look in the mirror, you start to find the aspects of yourself that you appreciate. I'm not talking about an egotistical self-love. I'm talking about a healthy self-appreciation. 
And then you start remembering the times when you did things you were proud of. Oh, there's always some times in your past where you did the right thing, you said the right thing, and you can go back and focus on those. And you can enlarge the experience of loving yourself. When you love yourself, when you appreciate yourself, and when you appreciate money, you now alter your mind to allow more money into your life. This is the very first step in the seven-step formula for attracting more money. Now, in my book, I go into more length about all of this, but I'm giving you all that you need in this tutorial. I have transformed this show on Zero Limits Living into a freebie for you to transform your prosperity consciousness. You can leave scarcity behind, and it all begins with step one, altering your thinking. Well, what's step two? Step two is about giving. Another one of the books that I've written most recently, this was called Karmic Marketing. Karmic Marketing is really based on the idea of giving now in order to receive later. I've often said that I built a whole empire online by giving. I give an incredible amount of material. This very show, I don't get paid to do this. My guests don't get paid to do this. I'm doing this for you. This is a gift to you coming from my soul, my heart, my passion, wanting to make a difference in your life. Even the book, I held up this book and said, Attract Money Now. I wrote it in 2010, and I was going to tell you how you could have it. Go to attractmoneynow.com. It's yours. It's free. Attractmoneynow.com. It's another example of giving. Now, you've no doubt heard about giving at some point in your life because somebody told you about tithing. Tithing is more of the religious term for the aspect of giving. I have found that giving is one of the secrets to becoming wealthy. Giving is one of the secrets to receiving more money. But you have to give in a particular way. You have to give from joy. You have to give to where you've received inspiration. Now, when you think about it, Somebody said something or did something that made a difference in your life, and probably very recently. It could have been an Uber driver. It could have been a waiter or waitress. It could have been somewhere, someone who opened the door for you or said the right thing and put a spring in your step. Somebody who encouraged you, somebody who motivated you, somebody who inspired you. That's where you want to give money. And I am talking about giving money. When it comes to this step two, a lot of people will say, well, I helped my neighbors move. Wasn't that giving? No, that was helping. You gave muscle. You didn't give money. Step two is about giving money. I've also heard, and believe me, I've been there. I understand it, that people will say, well, I'll give when I have money to give. I've said that myself. When I was broke or felt broke and couldn't even get on a bus because it cost 60 cents and I didn't have 60 cents in Dallas, Texas to get on a bus to go anywhere. That was broke. But the way we have to look at giving is that you always have some money. 60 cents or 50 cents or whatever I had at the time was some money. To give 10% of it would have been a start in the direction of giving. This is where we need to start. I don't know you again, but you may be on a weekly paycheck or maybe you don't have a paycheck at this point. Maybe you're collecting unemployment. Maybe you're getting some sort of relief. Maybe somebody is helping you, but there is some sort of money coming into your life. Yes, I know you want more. And yes, you deserve more. And yes, by watching this particular program, you're going to end up attracting more. But right now, you have money. You have to take 10% of it and give it to wherever you received spiritual nourishment. 
wherever you were inspired or motivated, wherever you felt that little zing of happiness because of something somebody said or did for you. That's where you need to give the 10%. You can look throughout history and you will find some of the greatest titans and tycoons are big givers. And a lot of people, and you might be saying this too, get very skeptical and say, yeah, they're given. They have the money to give. But if you look closer, you'll see that they were giving when they didn't have the money to give. They were giving during their struggle years. And that's what you need to do. I wrote a book maybe 20 years ago called The Greatest Money-Making Secret in History. I still love the title. All it is, is about giving. The greatest money-making secret in history is to give. Now, it's a good policy to give anything and everything. This is why I said you can have my book, Attract Money Now. Go to attractmoneynow.com and there's the book. But specifically, in order for you to attract more money, you have to give more money. I'm not talking about giving away everything. I'm talking about giving away 10% of what you have. I know you're going to wrestle with this step too, but until you make peace and to begin the process of giving, you will continue to struggle. You'll get breakthroughs, and as you go through these seven steps, you'll get more money coming in. But if you really want to do well, and you really want to make a difference in the world, what you have to do is start giving and giving now. Dan Kennedy is one of the marketing people that has greatly influenced me. And he's often said that the window you receive through is made bigger when you give. Imagine that you are giving more. As you're giving more, you are expanding your ability to receive more. This is a psychological principle, and this is a metaphysical principle. Point being, it works. When I mentioned Andres Pira, the man who wrote Homeless to Billionaire, the man who was homeless at one point in Thailand, he discovered that one of the biggest secrets to his success was giving. He noticed that when he started giving more, he started receiving more. When he was living in Thailand, he discovered, and as I did when I went to Thailand the first time, it's a gift culture mentality. I didn't realize this, but in Thailand, on a person's birthday, they don't receive gifts. They give gifts. That was a head spinner for me. It was a head spinner for Andres Pira. And we both discovered that giving was one of the greatest secrets to financial success. That's step two, give. All right, what's step three? Step three is called prosperous purchasing. You don't like this step. It'll seem unusual to you, but let me explain what it is. Prosperous purchasing is step three. And what it means is when you have the desire to buy something, and you have the money to do it, then you must do it. You must do it. Now, first of all, I'm not encouraging you to go into debt. There's certain debt that is useful. It's debt that you can leverage to get other things, like when you buy a house and sometimes when you buy a car. There's useful debt. But in prosperous purchasing, I'm wanting you to do something specific. I want you to consider when you're standing in front of the dress you want, or the shoes you want, or there's some service that you want, whatever it happens to be in your particular case, and you're really feeling that, oh, I would love to have that. That would feel great to have that. And then you reflect and go, well, I have the money. I have it either in my pocket. I have it in my checkbook. I have it somewhere. Then you have to buy. Why? Because when you buy and you're able to buy and you're buying something you love, you are sending a message of prosperity consciousness to yourself. You're also telling yourself, I'm worth it. I deserve this. I'm going to get this for me. It's a very important step. To illustrate how powerful this is, think of the opposite. If you're standing in front of something that you really do want, and you could buy it, 
but you tell my tell yourself, well, I might need the money on for a rainy day, or I can wait and I should get this at another time, or oh, that's too much money, or what do my neighbors think, or what would my parents think, or what would my spouse think, and you talk yourself out of it. You are talking yourself into scarcity consciousness. In order to expand your mind and step into prosperity and prosperity thinking, you have to practice prosperous spending. Now, prosperous spending is not a road to debt. I'm not asking you to go on a spending spree. I'm inviting you to consider the next time you are in front of something you want, you're shopping, you see a book on Amazon, or you want to invest in some sort of program for yourself, and you know this is right for you, you know you want it, you know it's right for you, and you know you have the means to do it, then by God, you have to do it to reprogram your mind to think from a prosperity place. If you keep coming from scarcity, you will maintain living in scarcity. If you keep telling yourself, I don't have enough, guess what you'll attract? Not enough. So this step three is all about a vote for your mental shift in the prosperity. I call it prosperity spending or prosperity investing, and it's a way of buying what you already want to buy anyway, but giving yourself permission to do it while telling yourself you deserve to do it, and then when you do, enjoying what you've done. Now, there's a couple deeper aspects to prosperous purchasing or prosperous spending. And the deeper aspects include being willing to shock yourself. I wrote another book called Money Loves Speed. And in Money Loves Speed, I talk about the prosperity shock treatment. I first read about it in an old book from the 1920s. Oh, I love some of those old classics that were written even before Napoleon Hill wrote his famous book, Thinking Grow Rich, in the 30s. And I, go, and I go way back to the 20s and even into the 1800s, and I read these stories. And there was a coach, a coach in the 1920s, who had advised a person that was struggling to go and empty their bank account. Now, that's pretty bold. That's pretty shocking. 1920, a man came for coaching saying that he was struggling. The coach says, how much do you have in the bank? And he didn't have very much. But the coach says, go take it out and go buy your wife and yourself some really wonderful things you've been wanting. You wanted a new kitchen table? Go get it. You wanted a new suit? Go get it. And the man panicked. The man panicked thinking, this is the last of my money. And the coach says, it's not the last of your money. Every one of us, and I've been there too, think we're never going to have more money. You're probably thinking that too. You're sitting there going, well, if I spend what I have or I give what I have, I won't have any more money. The shocking truth is you always have more money. Money needs to circulate. Money needs to flow. It always comes to you. Now, because of this particular show, and my book, Attract Money Now, it's going to come to you faster and it's going to come to you in bigger amounts because you're expanding your consciousness. You're expanding your avail availability to receive even more. But the prosperity shock treatment is to do something that shocks your mind. It shocks your system into opening you to look for new possibilities, to act from a greater sense of boldness, to think in terms of wider creativity. All of that comes from shocking yourself. I remember there was a famous author. She's still around. When she was broken, struggling, she hired a coach. She spent $5,000 for the coach, which is what that particular coach was costing. And she put the $5,000 on her credit card. It shocked her. It shocked her system. That night she couldn't sleep. That night she was in the bathroom, bathroom throwing up. She was puking. And she called the coach back the next day and said, I, I want to cancel. I want my money back. And the coach says, no, this is part of the process. You are purging 
your limitations and your negativity and your disbelief. Let it go. Let it all come out. And let's move forward. That woman went on to become a multimillionaire with three New York Times best-selling books. And her name is Jen Sincero. Her first book was called You Are a Badass. And I know her story because she told it to me personally over lunch. Sometimes you have to shock yourself. I keep shocking myself at this level of success or whatever you want to call that I'm experiencing right now in my life by even greater purchases and even greater risks with investments and business ideas that I jump on. All of this is around step three, prosperous spending, prosperous purchasing. So if you go and check out, for example, my program, Miracles Coaching, go to miraclescoaching.com. You get your 45-minute consultation and you find out what the price is and it shocks you. Guess what? That's the shock you need to leave the old you and to go into the prosperous you. That's step three. Step four. What is step four? Step four is about asking for help. This is an important one because when I was broken, when I was struggling and I was in poverty for 10 years, I didn't want to ask for help. I wanted to do it myself so I can be proud of myself. It was kind of a test. It was a dumb test because the truth of the matter is we're not supposed to do any of this alone. There are seven or more billion people on this planet. We all need to help each other. Don't be afraid to ask for help. If there's somebody that knows something you need to know, call them, write them, contact them. I have found in my experience, even the most successful people in the world will give time to somebody who is sincere, who genuinely needs a leg up and will ask for help. I've seen it over and over again. Even when I was a kid and I wanted to be a professional boxer, I wrote to Jack Dempsey, who was alive at the time. He wrote back. When I was a kid and I thought I was going to be a professional magician like Harry Houdini, I wrote to the magician that was famous at the time, John Mulholland. He wrote back. He sent me a two-page letter answering all of my questions. It was mind-blowing for a kid to go through. And then I backpedaled and became the solitary lone ranger for the longest time. And during that time, I struggled. Learn to ask for help. And there's two levels of asking for help. And I go into the book in great detail. But the second level is to ask your guardian angels. Now, I interview a lot of different people on this show. And one of them fairly recently talked about guardian angels. And she said, you have to speak out loud to them. They can't read your mind. But they're in the room with you right now. I talk to my guardian angels every day. I ask for help. That is step four. What's step five? Step five is something that I coined. It's a word that I have learned to repeat over and over, and it's called nebulize. Nebulize what you want. Nebulize having more money. What does that mean? Neville Goddard was a mystic. He was an author. He was a speaker. He became very famous. Then he kind of disappeared after he died. And now there's a whole movement to bring attention to him. I republished one of his very first books way back in 2005. Neville, as he was better known, taught about feeling as if what you want has already come to you. So you're imagining having more money. Instead of just intending more money or imagining more money, you would nebulize having more money, which means you would imagine and feel as if you already have the money now. For example, imagine that you got the money yesterday. I don't know if you want $5,000 or $50,000 or $500,000 or $50 million. It doesn't matter. But whatever is the believable stretch for you, Imagine you received it, you attracted it yesterday. How would you feel right now? How would you feel in your body, in your mind? Neville went on to say, imagine that what you want has been fulfilled. In fact, he wrote in one of the books I have, he signed it. 
Imagine the wish fulfilled. Imagine the wish fulfilled. The wish fulfilled means that whatever the intention is, in this case, more money, has already been completed. So you have the more money. Neville said, who do you call? Who do you write? What do you do? Try to role play and imagine the scenario once this actually takes place. What Nevelizing does is speed up the law of attraction. Most people intend what they want, they visualize what they want, but they don't feel the completion of what they want. For Neville in this step five, he basically, basically was saying, live from the end result. Instead of imagining, oh, I'm going to have money tomorrow or next week, imagine you already got the money. And now it's not just imagery. It's the physiological experience. How does that feel in your body to have this money and really step into it? Close your eyes and imagine it. You have the money. What are you buying? What are you doing? Who are you telling? Who are you giving it to? What is the experience like? Nevelize it. I recorded a song with Grammy-nominated singer Ruthie Foster. It's called Feel It Real. And that's what you're doing in step five. You're feeling it real. Nevelize the money. You already have it. How does it feel? Step six, and this is all about thinking like an entrepreneur. Think like an entrepreneur. What does that mean? When I was growing up, I didn't even know what the word entrepreneur meant. I had to learn. But an entrepreneur sees opportunities. More importantly, an entrepreneur listens for complaints. Donnie Deutsch had a TV show on CNBC called The Big Idea. One of the joys of my life was that I was one of the guests on his show. I loved him. I loved his show. I watched it religiously. And he would often say one of the greatest ways to find a business idea to attract more money is to listen for complaints. When you complain or somebody in a line somewhere complains or you see people complaining on Facebook, or social media or someplace, you tell yourself and you ask yourself, how can I solve that? Because if you do solve that, you just created another way to attract more money. Think like an entrepreneur. It's a big subject. And again, I write about it in the book, Attract Money Now, which you can have. Just go to attractmoneynow.com. All right, I said there's seven steps in this formula. What's the seventh step? The seventh is helping the world. Help your community. Help the world. Give back. It was only a few months ago, based on the time that we're recording this right now, that Russia had invaded Ukraine. And as I had mentioned earlier, I've been to Russia a couple of times. I've been to Ukraine a couple of times. I have friends in both places, and I cared about what was going on, especially to the people in Ukraine who were evacuating, who were being bombed, good people just trying to live their lives, who are now desperate and starving and scared. And I thought, how can I help? What can I do? And I was about to come out with a brand new program. And I thought, all right, I am going to release my brand new program, but I'm going to give 100% of the proceeds to it to Ukraine war relief. And I did. I did. Now, you might ask yourself, well, Joe, how does that help you attract any money if you gave away all the money, all the, the funds that came in, all the proceeds, all the sales that came in from that new product went to Ukraine war relief because my friends were still over there and I can send the money to them. How did that help me? Well, it didn't help me directly. It helped me indirectly. All of the money I aimed over to Ukraine and went over to Ukraine made me feel fantastic. That elevated my vibration. If you know anything about the law of attraction, it's based on your vibration. It's not based on what you're thinking and what you're saying and even what you're visualizing, unless what you're thinking and saying and visualizing is upping your voltage your vibration. My giving on that scale upped my ability to receive. But I didn't think about receiving. I just thought about helping. And that's what step seven is. How can you help your community? How can you help your world? But let me tell you the story that I often don't get to tell. By giving 100% of the sales, all of the revenue to Ukraine war relief, 
I did a good deed, obviously. I, I earned good karma points, if you will. But I didn't look for money to come back from that. I didn't look for anybody to give me an award from that. A month or so after I did it, though, I met a young man who said he was collecting rare books. And then I remember thinking, I wonder if he wants my collection of hypnosis books. I've been collecting hypnosis books since the 1960s, but I was done with it. I didn't need that. I was moving. I had gone through a divorce. I was trying to scale down. And so I said, yeah, I, I told him about the collection. And he immediately said, I'll buy it. What do you want? And then I thought, what do I want? And it was incredibly valuable and almost priceless. But I gave him a big number. He paid it. Now, here's the punchline. The big number was 10 times more than what I gave Ukraine war relief. It was almost as if the universe has its own bookkeeping system. Forget the way your accountant does your books. The universe does books in a magical and miraculous way. And what the universe did for me was balance the books. I gave because step seven says, help the world, help your community. And then the universe rewarded me with a 10 times the amount jackpot. All of these things work. All of these steps work. So I'm going to review them real quick. The first one is alter your thinking. You know that money is a useful tool. It's actually even a spiritual force for good. It's up to you to how to, on how to use it. And realize you deserve good things, including more money. The second is give. Start giving now. Yes, I know you want more money. Yes, I know you feel like you're broke. Yes, I know that you may have bills to pay, but you've got to start giving 10% to where you receive motivation, inspiration, and do it right now. Third step is prosperous purchasing. Don't forget to actually shock yourself from time to time by making a purchase that makes you a little uncomfortable, even though you know it's the right thing for you. The fourth thing is to ask for help. Ask from the elders of the world. Ask from the people that are already successful in the business you want to be in. And ask your guardian angels. The fifth is to nevelize what you want. Feel as if it's already happened. You already attracted the money. You already have the soulmate or the car or the better health. How does it feel? Feel it real. The sixth step is to think like an entrepreneur. Start looking for opportunities. They're everywhere. When we started the pandemic a few years ago and we were told to start wearing masks, I was on an interview and I said, you know what? Some wise person could start making designer masks. And you can start making masks that have little sayings on them, mottos and quotes and humorous this and that. Well, at that point, it was a joke. Now it's a business. There's businesses to be had everywhere. The seventh thing is help your community, help others, and the world will balance the book and return it to you. This is huge. All of these seven steps is, this is my gift to you. This is my gift to you. And the book, Attract Money Now, is my gift to you. Go to attractmoneynow.com and you can have the PDF, the ebook version of it. If you want the hardcover, you can go to attractmoneynowbook.com or just go to Amazon. And for any of the other books I've mentioned in this tutorial, go to Amazon. Money Love Speed is at Amazon. The Awakened Millionaire is at Amazon. Homeless to Billionaire is at Amazon. Any of the other books that I've mentioned or any of my books at all are on Amazon, and I invite you to go there. So as we end this particular show, which has been a classroom gift to you on how to attract money, I want you to realize that where you are is temporary. You can change. You can change no matter what your environment, what your background, what your education, what your experience. You can change. You can blossom. You can grow. You can attract more money. If I can do it, Andres can do it, and hundreds of thousands of people or millions throughout history can do it, then certainly you can do it too. So you've been watching Zero Limits Living. Every week I bring inspiration and information to transform your life. This week was a solo episode with just me, Dr. Joe Vitale. But all the weeks ahead, I have guests that are really going to be focused on helping you. 
And you can watch or listen to this show on 1,000 different platforms, including Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, YouTube, and many more. Just go to ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com. You can watch all the episodes there. Remember to check out my coaching program. It's proven, it's trademarked, it's tested, it's available. Go to miraclescoaching.com and get a free consultation, miraclescoaching.com. And finally, I want to thank Lux Media Studios for making this show possible and broadcasting it to the world. I want to thank Candace Barr for believing in me and inviting me to do this show. I want to thank Nick, who's behind the scenes running the cameras and equipment so that you can hear and see me. And I want to thank you for watching. Remember... Expect miracles. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASET. NASET increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.